they're going to pick up their signal. And you make a point also that they send a signal. It takes how many light years to get here? They might be, be extinct by the time <laughs> it actually gets here, right? It's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's <laughs> right. They're a thousand light years away, so it took a millennium for the signal to get here. You know, maybe they've done something uh, terrible to themselves there. That's possible. But on the other hand, it's also possible that when you get a you know birthday card from your aunt that you know, it took uh, three days or four days to get to you. Maybe she's dead now, maybe, but unlikely. <laughs> unlikely. Unlikely. I see. Interesting. Um, let's see. There are a couple of projects. Uh, the Big Year Project at Ohio State. Uh, this, what was the, the Phoenix Project? And I guess mm -hmm. that's what kind of the, that was your first project after you were kind of resurrected. That's right. What, are there any other interesting projects you can talk about? That's sure. That's yeah, I mean, on. all these things, by the way, are, you know, there's, there's nothing secret about any of these things. People can just go onto the web and find them. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, the, the UC Berkeley has quite a few observing programs, and they're, they're very clever ones. Mm -hmm. uh, but also there are experiments where instead of trying to eavesdrop on radio waves, mm -hmm. uh, try and look for flashing lights in the sky. Yeah. You know, at first people thought, well, that isn't going to work, flashing lights. But actually, it could work. With lasers, big powerful lasers, mm -hmm. you could flash information from one star to another just on a beam of light. Oh, I see. So there are experiments... Uh, Allen Mount Hamilton, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. over, uh, you know, in Orinda, okay. and also at Harvard and Princeton, okay. where they're looking for um, these very brief flashes of light that would tell you that somebody's trying to get in touch. Right. You're talking about Princeton, there was a woman at Princeton, a physicist, who proved that the universe is will expand forever. There was a the thought that maybe the universe was actually hit a wall and was starting to shrink back on itself. Or do you remember who Well, who I, I don't remember her name. I've actually talked with her, but... <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. I, she made a big impression. Uh, I, I, I don't remember exactly, but I don't think that she, her idea was terribly mainstream. But the, but the point is yeah. that yes, we've known since 1920s actually that the universe is expanding. Ed oh. Hubble figured that out. Okay. But there have been some new twists on that. The, the, the big question always was, well, look, the universe is expanding, but all these stars and planets and galaxies—they're all pulling on one another. So at some point, it should, you know the expansion should stop because of the tug of gravity mm -hmm. and everything ought to come back together in a big crunch. Mm -hmm. you know, that'll ruin your whole day, <laughs> but it'll ruin everybody's whole day. Right. Right, so the question was whether that was going to happen or not. Yeah. So people were making measurements to try and determine that. And what they found, much to their surprise, and this only within the past couple of years is a new, a new result, mm -hmm. is that not only is it expanding, but the expansion's speeding up. Speeding up. So the universe is not only getting bigger and bigger, but it's getting bigger and bigger faster and faster That's for right. some reason. For some reason we don't really understand. Mm. And uh, that means that every night you mm. go out, you know, there's a little bit less to see. I see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't notice it with your eye, of course. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, the universe is probably destined to expand forever. Yeah. Not just a long time, but oh. forever. Okay. And the stars will all go out. You know, the station will probably close when the sun right, dies. Right, We've it's got like about, what, five billion years left on our sun? You've got about five billion years, and that's a long time. And besides, okay. in five billion years, you know, you just all go right. to another star by then. Pretty you know, you'll much. have the technology. But... You know, that star is going to burn out. In, in, in 100 billion years, all the stars are, are burning out. Yeah. So then, then you're stuck. Then we're stuck. You, you talked about movies in your book, uh, the, the way move, Hollywood portrays aliens, and you talked about they're probably nothing like ho what Hollywood thinks they are. How, how do you, can you talk about that just briefly because we're kind of running out of time? But um, they're not going to look like E.T. Are, there, are they going to be microscopic, uh, tiny, but powerful, or... <laughs> Are yeah. they going to be Well, I'm sure there are a lot of very small <laughs> aliens out there. Yeah, little, little microbes. Right. I mean, you know, there may be some microbes on Mars. I mean, you don't know. But, right. but the intelligent ones won't be terribly small because, they, after all, they've got to have a brain. They have a decent-sized brain. Right. But they probably won't look like us. Mm -hmm. there's, there's dispute about that. But, but honestly, I think that it's, it's, uh, all you have to do is go to the zoo and check out the animals there. They don't look like us. E.T. probably will not look like us. Will not look like us. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you do you ever feel like uh, do you ever feel ter terrified of knowing too much? I mean, I, I know you must know a lot the way the way you look at things here on Earth. I mean, by thinking uh, about what's in outer space, uh, things on Earth can seem kind of mundane to you. What, what do you? Well, I've got to tell you, Fred, I've never been terrified of knowing too much. <laughs> <laughs> never had that luxury. I've been plenty terrified of not knowing enough, however. Um, no, uh, you know, obviously the, the, this kind of work. This is you know not sort of your average job or right. you're a certified public accountant or something right. like that. I mean, it's a little different. Right. And it has the appeal that it does deal with a big picture question. Mm -hmm. right? And so that's, that's good. Sometimes people will ask, does this affect your religious beliefs? And it's, for some reason, it doesn't seem to. Uh, most astronomers have the same religious beliefs as anybody else, actually, mm -hmm. any, any college-educated group of people. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, you know, it, uh, it puts some things in perspective a little bit, but I can't say that it, uh, no, it doesn't greatly distort my view of the world here on Earth, I hope. Mm -hmm. You should talk to my friends. Right. We've got about two minutes left. If we, if we do actually make contact one day, how, how do you think that's going to change things? I mean, it, are people going to freak out, or what are, you, what are you prepared for? How do you think this is going to turn out for us? Big unknown. Nobody really knows, because what, what people do to try and answer that question, you know, people thought about the question, mm -hmm. is they look for an historical analog. Mm -hmm. In other words, they say, well, what, give me something in history that's sort of similar to this situation where you suddenly find a signal. We're not alone. Mm -hmm. My God, here's a signal. Right? Mm -hmm. And there, there are no very good historical analogs. Mm -hmm. And it could be that people will ride in the street. It could be that, you know, you wake up in the morning and say, well, I'm not going to work anymore. I'm just going to go ride in the streets. They found aliens. You know, that could happen. I doubt it. Mm -hmm. and in particular, the polls for the last couple of decades have shown that, you know, the majority of Americans, or at least half of them, mm -hmm. think that not only the aliens are out there, but they're probably here, you know, buzzing the countryside in saucers. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't think that's the case. But, but a lot of Americans do. Mm -hmm. So if they picked up the papers tomorrow and it said that we'd found a signal, I don't think that that's going to, you know, cause the destruction, uh, self-destruction of society. I don't think so. It'd be an extremely interesting story. It'll be very mm. big font on the newspapers, but right. it's not the end of society as we know it. Okay, that's, that's, that's good. That's a comforting thought. Your favorite Far Side comic? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, there, there's so many of them. Uh, I, I, I suppose it's the dinosaurs smoking cigarettes. Oh, okay. The truth about how the dinos were wiped out. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of, that's kind of the, uh, a warning for us as a society that we should take heed of that. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, and, and don't assume there was a, a meteorite, but it probably was a meteor. Yeah. Is there anything else, any other, anything else you'd like to say? Is there um, any projects you're working on or books that you're working on that uh, we can look forward to? Well, always working on such things. If, if people are, despite this, uh, this, this show tonight, still interested in, in, in the subject of, uh, which, of which we have spoken, they can certainly go to the SETI Institute's website. I'd encourage them to do that. Okay. That's just SETI.org. SETI.org. SETI yeah. SETI okay. Well, that's, we're out of time, and I want to thank you very much for coming on. It's been great talking to you. Uh, and I want to thank uh, my crew, otherwise this show would not be made. And I want to thank, uh, thank all the viewers for watching, and we will see you next time. Thanks. Hey, whatever.